guys, today I'm back with another video about unpacking the craft room. Today we're going to look at liquids and stamp pads. So I packed a lot of different liquids, I did a few different things with them, and we're going to see how those did. I will tell you which one of those went on my truck, and so they were in the heat and stayed on the heat for like 48 hours versus ones that I brought with me in my car and um, if there was any difference in those two things. So if you have not checked out my other videos, make sure you do that. We got lots of um, packing up the craft room, lots of unpacking the craft room. Soon there will be another craft room tour, um, but make sure you hit the subscribe button, notifications, and the like button. That all helps me a whole lot and it will help you get notified when I do more videos about the craft room or just any of the card making videos. So I appreciate your support on all that so much. Everything that I use today I'm going to link in the description below. So you'll see links there. Those do give me a small commission that really helps me run this channel. So let's get right into what we need to do here in this video. I'm going to start with stamp pads. So I packed the ink pads in a couple of different ways. I did some in a homemade Ziploc bag and just stacking them on top of each other. So it looked like this. You can see. I closed it really well. I made sure that I took up any extra space with some plastic bags. Um, this stayed just like this in the package that I put it in. So when I pulled it out, it came like this. I made sure to store it sitting up. None of the tops were off, which is great. Um, I still will double check their ink and just make sure that it doesn't seem like any of them leaked anywhere because sometimes they'll leak around the edges. So I will take all these out and make sure I don't see any leaking and I'll let you look at that process later in this video. The other way that I stored inks were in these totally Tiffany bags. So these bags are plastic. They have a little Velcro thing that closes them, but I made sure to keep them in my bag like this. They have some plastic, almost like really hard acetate on the inside that keeps everything from flopping side to side and falling over. So I did not have a single ink pad that fell over or had its top off or anything like that in these. These bags I did take with me in the car, so I packed these up, carried them in my essentials bag, so they did not get exposed to a ton of heat. But this other bag, I actually sent in a package, so in a big box with some other things. And I did that because I kind of wanted to see if we had any trouble. I figure these inks get mailed to us in heat and you know go through that, so I figured they would be okay but I just wanted to check it a couple of different ways so that you would know if you needed to take your ink pads with you. Right now, my thought is that unless you need the ink pads on the go, it's fine to put them in a packing box. You know, we moved in July to the South as evidenced probably by my frizzy hair because it is definitely humid and hot here. Um, but this did great and I have had no problems. I will, like I said, open it up later in the video just to make sure that I don't see any leaking. So we'll do that kind of with the camera over it so you can watch and see if you see any problems. So let's open up some inks that were in my homemade packing, which is the gallon size bag, and they were sent on the moving truck in the heat. So all of this stuff on the edge of this, um, tumbled glass. It actually had leaked previously, but it's all dry. That is not any new leaking there. And I wanted to make sure that it wasn't dried out. So I stamped it there. You can see all these that I've never had a leak with did great. So I think packing this type of thing on your um, moving truck is perfectly fine as long as you've got them sitting straight up. The only time I've had a leak in one of these is if it was laying sideways. So that um, tumbled glass that leaked. I actually had it sitting sideways for a little while and so it leaked previously. That's why it's got all that staining around it. Next let's look at how I did the liquid sprays. So I have dilution inks, I have distress oxide inks that are sprays, lots of different options. With the dilutions and the distress oxides, this is how I pack them. I put them in a quart size Ziploc freezer bag. I added a paper towel and I put them 
on the moving truck. So in the heat, over 100 degrees. I figured that I would try it this way because these get mailed to us and I know they go on moving trucks. So I did not have a single leak on any of these. So I'm going to show you how they look in the drawer. There was one top that had a little bit of liquid in it and I think that was left over. I should have cleaned the tops before I did this. But you can see in that Distress Oxide Spray Tumble Glass, that I believe was like that previously. Like I said, I had some trouble storing tumbled glass when I first got it and I have remedied that so hopefully those will be fine from here on out. The other semi-liquid that I sent on the moving truck was Nuvo Drops. I had tons of things in this kind of packaging and bottles and I took a gallon size bag and wrapped it around and then I taped them shut. So that worked perfectly. I didn't have any explosions or any leaking from these at all. And I'm going to show you um, a couple of tips that I think you should do with these. I know that's weird that the I used so much plastic on this one, but I felt like that way I had a little extra coverage if they did leak. So I'm sure you could put them in a smaller bag if you want. The other thing that I did was keep them in rainbow order. So I have this little divider that goes in my IKEA Alex drawer and it's made by Stampin' Storage. And I knew I was gonna be putting my Nuvo drops directly back in it. So I kept everything in rainbow order so that I could easily just plop them back into their spots. If I had it to do over again, I would make sure to do this with everything that I'm using. I have set up my scrapbook room in mostly rainbow colors, especially when I have multiple products that are different colors like stamp pads or inks, anything like that. And having them already in their bags in the appropriate order makes setting it up so much faster. So definitely consider doing that when you're packing your scrapbook room. I wanted to show you some rainbow cuteness of fitting these things into my Alex drawer so you can see just some fun colors and how I got this part unpacked. Hey guys, thanks for sticking to the end of the video here. That really makes me happy that you would spend your time with me today and I hope that you got something valuable out of this video. I made a recent video in time for Stamp Timber, which if you don't know what Stamp Timber is, it's a lot of stamp companies and mainly Simon Says Stamp do a ton of promotions and special events in September. So I always try to have my Christmas list ready before Stamp Timber so that I can get things or have people get me stuff while there's some deals. So I made a video of my Christmas list. So video of Nikki's Crafty Christmas List. Um, things that I, Some things that I already have that I just want to show you and if you're looking to buy um, have really worked well in my craft room but also things that I'm hoping to get and I'm gonna tell you the reasons why I'm looking at these things what I think they could be used for and um, I just hope you enjoy it so make sure you check that video out and I've got plenty of more card process making videos soon so I hope that you all have a good day and um, I hope to see you back on the channel again soon thanks